Oh, howdy all, grab yourselves a beer, it is time for some Path of Exile discussion. This is the first in a three-part series where I want to discuss the challenges in the Heist League. And I'm aiming this at the three videos at three different sections of the player base. The first one is for people looking for tips to get to 12 challenges. Uh, the second one for people looking for tips to get to 24. And the third one for people whose goal is either to hit 36 or 40 challenges. So although this is about the, the 12 challenge, getting to 12 challenges, I'm going to discuss what I feel are the easiest 18 challenges. Uh, if you're interested in getting my notes though that you see in this spreadsheet over here, uh, I will provide a link to them below. Uh, this, uh, this spreadsheet has notes on every challenge and where I say tier, uh, this is an indication as to how far, uh, as to which type of player should go for this. So you'll see there's a bunch of them that say 12 and we've got a 12 slash 24 here, which means that it's one that I would, uh, that you might get if you're going for 12, but that might also be going, uh, might also be something that only people going for 24 need to worry about. Because there's 18 challenges in the first video, uh, I don't think there's a clear easiest 12, so I'm going to discuss the easiest 18. Uh, there'll be a number of them that you can skip. Anyways, uh, without any further ado, let's get into it. So Prepared for Battle is a pure tutorial. Uh, what you're going to want to do here is pick up a Sapphire Ring and a Topaz Ring while you are running through Act 1. If we've one to your left ring slot, one to your right ring slot, and never change them until you've beaten Piety in Act 3. Uh, so that's the way to do this if you're looking for the most efficient uh, efficient approach. But you can also just come back at endgame. And this is something that I ended up doing because I didn't even realise, like I was uh, levelling on the first day of the league and I didn't even realise that this challenge existed until I got a message saying I'd failed it. And then it was just a case of deciding, you know, some a full week later, oh, I should go and do that prepared for battle challenge. So I then put on a uh, Topaz ring, I put on a Sapphire ring, and I went to the end of Act 1, the end of Act 2, and the end of Act 3, killed the bosses again, and there we have it. So you can do it either way, do it at the time or do it later. Uh, Heist Encounters 1 is a real introduction to the heist mechanics, uh, but it's one that you can do very early in the in progression. So you see here that I've got an A6 note for progression. That means that you, you should probably be able to do this by Act 6, although it will vary for some people. So, Smuggler's Cash is in roughly every 10th zone while you're levelling. Uh, to purchase a contract from Wakano the Barber, you will need to talk to him in the Rogue's Harbour, and he will sell them for normal currency items. I think it's normally for Orbs of Chance. Uh, to complete a contract, you will need to successfully get out. The easiest way to do this is to massively out-level the zone that you're running. Uh, so, for instance, if you've got a level 31 contract, uh, you can run that at level 31 and it'll be fairly challenging and also fairly rewarding. Or you can come back at level 55, the loot will all be stuff you've out-leveled, so it'll be rubbish, but you will have a very easy time beating it. For a Grand Heist, it's the same thing. Uh, the key is that in, to complete a contract or a Grand Heist, you need to seize the main objective and successfully get out. Uh, so don't be ashamed if you fail one of these once or twice while, you, while you're sort of learning, learning the ropes of the Heist content. Uh, once you fail one, you will need to find a new one, but even the blueprints you need for Grand Heist, they're just not that rare. Uh, you should get a couple of them while you're, while you're going through the axe, and then you'll get a lot of them when you're in maps. To complete these quests, uh, the locations of them. Dweller of the Deep is in Act 1, uh, in the Flooded Passage, and it's a skill point quest. A Fixture of Fate is in Act 3, in the Library. The King's Feast is to kill Utula in Act 5. Uh, the Silver Locket is in Act 7 in the first zone outside of the city. And Queen of the Sands is in Act 9 in the Oasis. Uh, so you'll need to, uh, and in order to get access there, you will need to complete a bunch of other prerequisite quests from memory. I think you actually need to kill Boulderback in the Foothills. And then talk to Sin, and Sin will give you access to the Queen of the Sands quest. Uh, but I could be wrong on that front. Uh, just... Do all of the quests in Act 9 and you'll have no trouble, uh, and you will get this one. Queen of the Sands involves a reasonably difficult fight. You've got to kill uh, Shikari, who is the uh, who is a scorpion god. Uh, the key thing to avoid there is when it looks like she's charging up a, a massive thing with her tail, what you want to do is rush behind her, but not just a little bit behind her, but go a little bit further behind her than you think you need to. Uh, if you do that, her most devastating attack won't, kill, won't hit you and that attack can one-shot you, all our other stuff is, is smaller. Defeat these act bosses is just simply killing the gatekeepers of the game. 
you have to kill these guys to get through uh, to the end game anyway. Uh, so Mavail, Val Oversoul, Dominus, Malachi, and Kitava. Uh, you're just going to need to kill these, and they will then let you through. Uh, there's a second one of these as well. It's all about just killing th killing things so you can progress. Complete Encounters 1 is a tutorial on some of the older uh, older things in the game that were added is previous league mechanics. So Rogue Exiles are basically almost PvP-like encounters. You're fighting against a uh, against someone an an NPC, but one that uses player skills. These were added in a league a long, long time ago. I think the Anarchy League that introduced them was 2013 or so. Uh, it's certainly the league that I started playing in. And once, uh, and you'll just need to find one of them and kill it. That shouldn't. Uh, that will be something you'll do by the time you complete Act One. In most of the time, uh, just because the Rogue Exile will be there, it'll be on your way. You'll kill it, and it will drop a small loot explosion. Uh, Acceleration Shrine buff is a lot of fun because it makes you tremendously faster. Uh, Acceleration Shrines are what I would term uncommon rather than rare, and in my experience, you normally get about three of them by the time you finish Act Ten. Arcanist Strongboxes are a little bit more common than Acceleration Shrines, and I think you'll probably get four of them by the time that you reach Act 10. It is sufficient just to use an Identify Scroll on one, or you can use a Transmutation Scroll. Basically, any sort of currency on it is fine. Uh, don't, however, use a Valorb. Valorb will achieve nothing, you'll just waste your Val. And a Remnant of Corruption on an Essence Monolith. Essence Monoliths are those packs of blue monsters that are frozen in place until you triple click the one in the middle of them. Uh, Sometimes when you destroy one, it will drop a remnant of corruption, and then you can use that on another essence monolith. When you do so, it will have a 25% chance to immediately release the essence monolith, and so start cause them to just get angry and start fighting you straight away. Otherwise, uh, it will empower or alter the essence monolith in some way, uh, making it potentially more challenging and potentially more rewarding. Uh, remnants of corruption are uncommon but not truly rare. You'll probably get about two of them while you're leveling through the axe. If you get staggeringly unlucky, though, uh, and you're really stuck on this one for a while, uh, there is a uh, there is a sextant modifier that you will often roll in high higher tier maps, and that will get you an enormous amount of essence monoliths on maps. It's not that common, but if you use your sextants to drop for you, you will definitely get it. Uh, Heist encounters two. Here, this is all about equip a heist trinket. You'll pretty much get the others for free. Uh, just by running heist normally. To equip a heist trinket, you need to do two things. Firstly, you need to actually own a heist trinket, but that's not enough. You also need to unlock the trinket slot. To unlock the trinket slot, you need to go into a heist that uh, drops cu uh, currency or trinkets and get to the curio room. Once you get to the curio room, you'll permanently unlock the trinket slot. There'll be There'll be a thing you can click there that will permanently unlock the trinket slot on your character. Complete these encounters too. Uh, to complete a prophecy chain, there are two ways you can do this. You can give Navali a lot of silver coins. In my experience, about 350 to 400 uh, silver coins will be needed in order to get over the complete a prophecy chain line. That's because the prophecy chains are pretty rare until you get the first one in them. Once you've had the first one in them, the rest of them are pretty common. Uh, but I still find that it can take quite some time to get them uh, to get them that way. The other way to get them is to find prophecies dropping. Uh, the way uh, prophecies drop as sealed items from a few sources. Uh, they can drop from legion encounters, but they mostly drop from delirium encounters and from heist. And given that this is heist league, your best bet is going to be to get them in heist. When you are running through a heist, particularly one that's in maps. Uh, you will find that you will get this pretty quickly. To complete a Betrayal safe house, you'll need to run typically 10 or so Jun missions the first time, and then they'll start getting more frequent after that, after you start building up your Betrayal board. Even if you don't know all the intricacies of the Betrayal system, uh, you should still be able to get one within 10 to 12 Jun missions. Uh, the reason that I have listed this as requiring 150 maps, though, is because you will probably need about 10 Jun missions. Uh, to defeat the Val Omnitech in Atzawadl, you will need to run four Elder missions in maps, uh, and therefore get twelve, uh, get all your twelve incursions done. 
When you've done this, uh, you'll also need to connect enough lines within the temple, like enough paths open, uh, that you can path to the Val Omnitech. Uh, in case you stuff this up, because as I say, it takes four Elder missions to uh, complete a temple, uh, if you do stuff this up, it's not the end of the world, it's just going to take another four Elder missions. And if you're logging on daily, you'll, you'll get one Elder mission every day. Even if you're not logging on daily though, uh, when you complete a map, you'll have a reasonably high chance over to, uh, of getting another Elder mission. So you'll be able to get there over time. To defeat a possessed unique monster, there's a couple of options. Uh, the first one is just dumb luck, and this is how I did it. Uh, I had a tormented spirit that I didn't even see. Uh, I somehow scared it into a rogue exile and then killed it and got credit for this. Uh, that was luck. However, I think what we want is to talk about more deterministic ways. The first way is to loot the prophecy, the possessed foe, uh, which will drop somewhat often from prophecy ch uh, when uh, looting a delirium prophecy node or a heist prophecy chest. And when you've got that, uh, just use it and then go into a map and the map boss will be possessed. That's one option. The other one is to run the ma uh, is to run the map shore, and when you when you get to the boss of the shore map, uh, when you knock it down under fifty percent health, it will disgorge a tormented spirit. When you knock it under twenty five percent health, it will disgorge a second tormented spirit. These can then come back and possess the boss if they're not damaged so much that they're just instantly killed by you know by the same attacks you're using on the boss. So see this as being about controlling your damage output on the boss. Uh, get the boss down to uh, down to 50% or so. Make that one more hit that gets it under 50%, and then stop attacking immediately. Let the ghost re-enter the the boss, and then you'll be able to get credit for this. If you miss it at 50%, then try again at 25%. If you miss it both times, no big deal. You can always just complete complete the map and then start again the next time you loot a shore map. The third option is also in the Temple of Atsuadal. And this is to level up the room that uh, level up the tormented spirit room. And if you get that to tier three, the Satyr's Den, then every single unique monster in the entire instance will will start the will start the temple already possessed, uh, just like you used a possess foe prophecy, but affecting the whole temple. Uh, that actually is somewhat of a loot multiplier for the temple as well, and it can be a little bit of fun. But leveling a, leveling a room like the Seder Sten that doesn't do much else isn't really worth it. So I thought I'd mention that for completeness, but it's not really a good strategy. The key strategy here is either the Possessed Foe Prophecy or Dumb Luck or the Shore Map. A Defeat Act Bosses 2 is all about just gatekeepers that are stopping you from getting to maps. Uh, so you get this for free by the time you unlock the map device. Heist Encounters 3. Uh, the mansions are rarer. Now, while you are leveling... Uh, you will find that mansions will only drop from smugglers' caches. Uh, at least this was my experience. And then once you get well into maps, uh, you'll reach a progression point where mansions will get added to the drop pool for normal monsters. That progression point, I believe, and I'm not certain of this, but I believe it to be when you have done all 15 of the quest heists. Now, doing all 15 of the quest heists is definitely not something that's going to be done by most 12 of 40 players. Uh, so what I would suggest you do here is just when you get a mansion uh, a mansion heist drop, uh, just wait until you're five levels higher than it, and then go through it carefully uh, and beat it when you know when you're too strong for the zone. All of the rest of them, you should get these heists lots of times and have no problem getting one of each of them done. Vendor recipes. Uh, here I'm only going to mention one uh, one option for each type of thing. A scroll of wisdom. Vendor and Armourer's uh, Stone or a Blacksmith's Whetstone. Armourer's Scrap, sorry. Vendor and Armourer's Scrap for two Scrolls of Wisdom or a Blacksmith's Whetstone for four. Uh, for a Chromatic Orb, you will need to vendor a three or more linked item that contains a green, a blue, and a red socket, all connected to each other. If the item is six, six socketed, you'll get something else instead. So you need a three, four, or five linked item that has one of every colour. Uh, you can easily get this by looting a four link item off the ground and just wasting chromatic orbs on it until you've got that. Alternately, you can do what you what I think the game means you to do and just loot an already chromatic uh, an already chromatic item. Jeweler's orb, you'll need to sell an item that has six sockets. These start dropping fairly commonly once you get to late in Act Six. 
Now we have the three quality currencies, uh, glass balls, bauble, gem cutter prism, and cartographer's chisel. I'm going to tell you the wasteful way to do this because it's easy. Uh, take a flask, a gem, and a map respectively, and just raise them to 20 quality, then vendor the 20 quality item for one of that currency back. So for a gem cutter prism, uh, you might find a, a 14 quality gem on the ground, hit it with six gem cutter prisms, then vendor it and get one of those gem cutter prisms back. This is not the only option. There are a number of other recipes you can use as well, but uh, these quality currencies are dropped in such staggering quantities in the heist league that you shouldn't really care about wasting a few of them. For Chaos Orbs, you will need to sell a full inventory set of items. So that means, because uh, your character has two ring slots, one amulet slot, one belt slot, one glove, one boot, one helmet, one torso slot, and then two hands, you'll need to sell a piece of equipment for each of these inventory slots. All of these items need to be rare, strictly rare, uh, you can't use uniques in there, and they all need to have a minimum item level of 60, and, a ma uh, and the lowest among them needs to have a minimum item level of 74 or lower. Uh, if you are offered a chance orb instead, one of the items is too low in level, if you are offered a regal orb instead, uh, one of the items, oh sorry, all of the items are 75 and higher. If the items are rare and, and at least one of them is identified, you'll be offered one chaos orb. If they're rare and they're all unidentified, you'll be offered two chaos orbs. It's actually quite a lucrative recipe, especially with the specific nature of the heist economy. If you're just getting established in the league, uh, you, can do, you can do worse things than simply farming this Chaos Orb recipe repeatedly. If you do decide to farm the Chaos Recipe, I suggest you do it in low tier heists. Uh, so map equivalent heists of low tier once you're able to do so, because they drop a staggering amount of rare jewellery. For a map, you'll need to sell three of the same map. Uh, they all need to be the same tier and the same tile set. So if you were to vendor three tier one towers, this will work. If you vendor three tier eight towers, this will work but you can't vendor a tier 1 and two tier 8 towers. They all need to be the same as each other, uh, and then you will receive one map of one tier higher, and that will be the map recipe. For a sextant, you will need to sell three of any sextant. Then we get to the juicy one, Divine Orb. Here you need to sell a six-linked item. Now, don't use fusing orbs to do this. That is wasteful. The easiest way to do this is to run heist and loot the weapon and armor chess. These will drop two things. Firstly, sometimes they will drop a very bad unique item that is already six linked. In my experience, these drop about one in 50 chests. Uh, so if you get one of them, fantastic. But if you don't, they'll also regularly drop, regularly drop uh, divination cards for armor and weapons respectively. And a significant number of the weapon divination cards and the armor ones are for items that are six linked. So, you will find the divination card Humility drops the most of all of these. A set of nine Humility divination cards will turn in for a Tabula Rasa. This is a unique chess piece with no stats, but that always has six linked sockets, all of them white. Uh, getting a Tabula Rasa from the Humility cards, and then immediately selling that to a vendor is an option. And of course, you might decide to use the Tabula for a while. There's certainly nothing wrong with doing that. There are other divination cards that will drop as well. Uh, the Chains That Bind drops quite a bit. The Dapper Prodigy drops quite a bit, uh, and these are of varying values. So some of these are probably too precious to waste on the vendor recipe uh, for a Divine Orb. Uh, that's definitely true of uh, the set, the White Knight, which gives a very expensive, uh, or gives a very expensive six-linked item. Uh, if in doubt, just before you sell it to a vendor. Uh, just check, in, at least if you're in a trade league, just check whether the item that you're, the six link item you're selling has any particular value. If it doesn't, vendor away. And next up we have modify heist contracts, which is a really easy one that is all about just wasting a little bit of currency. Uh, you'll need to use all of these to modify heist contracts. Now modifying heist contracts has a couple of effects. It makes the monsters in them more fearsome, but it also uh, reduces the effect of opening chests on the lockdown on the alert timer, the alert bar and the lockdown timer. So all of these currencies are worth trying out once. Uh, the chaos orb is a little bit wasteful in that you would normally use a scouring orb first, then an alchemy orb, uh, but it's not staggeringly wasteful either. 
everything else here you'll probably just use in normal gameplay. Uh, for Defeat Heist Unique Monsters, this one's interesting in that it's sort of a bit of a freebie. Uh, you'll get these just by running even like 50 heists. You'll get all of these by chance. You'll meet them all. I uh, also quite like the name Great Boy. Complete Encounters 3 is done in maps, and this is all about precision boss kills. Uh, Leaf the Swift Handed it, uh, creates smoke clouds when he's attacking you, and you just need to stand in those, and then, yeah, when, then deliver the killing blow to Leaf while you're inside one of these. Uh, for the High Templar in Villa map without being affected by Cold Beam, so this is Dominus Phase 1, the map version of it, the, e uh, the easier of the two Dominus, uh, Dominuses in maps. Uh, what you're going to want to do here is just simply come and fight Dominus when you are just miles too powerful for the fight and when you're able to basically one-shot the boss. That's the easiest way to do this. Alternately, you can just simply dodge the beam. It's not that hard to dodge. Oak the Mighty while you're taunted. Uh, the taunts from Oak the Mighty, uh, there's, I think there's actually two of them. Uh, there's Oak's Enduring Cry that he will use regularly during the fight. And then additionally, I think the ancestor totems that he use also taunt you. Uh, so basically, you're just going to want to uh, get Oak pretty low, keep watching the fight, uh, keep watching the fight, keep persisting in the fight uh, until Oak taunts you, and then at that point, just deliver a one shot when he's already pretty low. Uh, Culling strike support will help you with that. For Joris Eyes Edge in Temple Map. Uh, you want to just get him down fairly low in life and then wait for him to cast the Scorching Ray, which doesn't usually take that long. I think he uh, tends to channel it for about 5 seconds once every 20 seconds or so. So just wait till he casts it and then at that point uh, snipe him. For complete Grand Heist, uh, this one you're going to need to speak to Wakano the Barber or Gianna or one of the others. I can't remember whether it's Nenet or Niles. I think it's Niles uh, to reveal runes and wings. Uh, these these use a currency that's uh, sort of hidden. Uh, there's, the, there's the rogue markers you're familiar with, but there's also another currency that you accrue each time you successfully complete a heist contract uh, that's, of a certain, uh, that's of a high enough minimum level. At that point, you will receive a blueprint unveil. If you did it with Gianna, uh, then you will receive a better blueprint unveil that will give you 40% off the rogue market cost. If you did it with Niles, you'll get 10% off, and if you did it with any of the other seven, then you'll get a full price one that you'll redeem from Wakano. Anyway, uh, that's an easily done. It's just a spending a few markers. I complete a Grand Heist, which has at least three wings revealed. Obviously, revealing two wings is a prerequisite for that, and you'll start getting blueprints that have three wings about the middle of the axe, in, uh, from my recollection. Uh, maybe it's even in low maps. In low maps, though, you'll get a lot of three wing and a few four wing ones. In high tier maps, it's mostly four wings. For completed grand heist, while well, at least six rogues are recruited, you're probably going to want a four wing grand heist. Uh, and then you might need to make one or two substitutions where you're saying, you know, I think the best person I could bring for this job is Vindiri, but I've already got Vindiri in the first wing, and I could use Huck instead. And so I'll just bring Huck along for one of the wings. Even though he's not as good as Vindiri, he'll get the job done and I'll be able to get credit for this. I find that normally I take five rogues on Grand Heist. Uh, that's my sort of default. Uh, although I have on one occasion taken seven. For complete uh, twin maps, uh, this one's just a case of running a bunch of different maps and using alchemy orbs on them. Uh, if you do this, you'll get twin just by chance. Twin isn't a common roll. But it's not staggeringly rare either. Uh, for Obtain Heist Rewards, there's a couple of these that are a little bit rarer than the others, and they are Gems and Prophecies. But when I say a little bit rarer, they're not very rare. You'll get most of these by opening the main path chests. So these are not the, not the ones behind locked doors, uh, but just the little ones. Uh, those chests drop random loot, and you'll find that you'll get all of these pretty... When I say in no time, maybe no time is an, is an exaggeration, but I would be very surprised if you have done 50, uh, 50 heists and not got all of these. And next up, we've got two last ones. These are major character power milestones. Now, I think that most people who, go f who stop the league after 12 challenges may end up missing these, uh, but they're useful because they will make your character stronger and will help you a lot if you later decide that you want to go for 24. 
Uh, so these are reaching level 90, which is pretty straightforward. And the only tip I'd really give there is that you'll sometimes get access to content that is essentially XP in a can. Uh, what I'm talking about here is things like the unique map for Beachhead, uh, or access to various areas in your delve mines, uh, especially the Harbinger encounters that give an enormous, enormous amount of XP compared to mapping, and that are relatively safe. If you've got access to content like that, I suggest just holding it, holding back on it. Don't use it until you reach, let's say that you got, you're currently level 87. When you're about 80, 85% of the way to level 88, then go and use that really safe content just to get you over the line. Uh, that will really help you, especially your first time going for 90. Uh, it can be a bit nerve-wracking when you're sitting at 89 and the death penalty is higher than you've been used to in the past. Uh, you know, each, each death might set you back six maps. Uh, but if you're careful, you'll get there in no time. Uh, I find that XP generally up to 90 is fairly fast. Uh, up to 93 takes a little bit longer. And then from then on, you need to be a bit more careful to, to level further. But uh, if you're still getting the feel for the game, 90 is a big milestone and it's one that you can be proud of yourself when you've achieved it. And that's why there's a challenge for it. Uh, Achieve Ascension is a bigger milestone in the sense that it gives you more character power. And this is the Labyrinth. Uh, you probably encountered the Labyrinth, the Cruel Labyrinth, and the Merciless Labyrinth while you were running through the axe. Uh, and I usually suggest if you're a newer player to do the labyrinth in uh, the normal labyrinth in Act 4, uh, the cruel labyrinth when you've completed Act 8, maybe when you're, uh, if you're feeling a bit squishy, do it during Act 9. The merciless labyrinth, I suggest if you're powering through Act 10, then do it before Katava. But if you're struggling a bit with Act 10, there's no shame in saying, you know what, I'm going to go and run maps and I'll come back when I've, when I've done 25 maps and then I'm just going to stomp through the merciless labyrinth because it'll be easier than everything else I've been running, uh, running since then. For the Eternal Labyrinth though, there's a number of prerequisites. You will need to find six Trials of Ascendancy in maps. These appear to be in about one in 15 maps. Uh, additionally, to get all six of them, on average, uh, just because of the fact that you need to get all six different ones, uh, on average it will take you 14.7 Trials of Ascendancy found in order to have a full set of six. Uh, and obviously that's an average. Uh, it's entirely possible that you can reach 24, 25, uh, 24 or 25 uh, trials found without having got a full, six, full set of six. If you find yourself in this situation, if you're in solo self found, uh, your way that you can remedy this is when you're running your Zana missions, uh, she will often give you a choice to do a map that will have, a, uh, that will have one of these uh, trials forced onto it. That will assist you in solo self found, but it's about all you can do. If you're in trade enabled though, jump into the trade channel Trade820 and you'll find other players that will be happy to help you out with getting that, with getting all of your, uh, all of your different trials done. Once you have done that, uh, you'll then need to beat the Eternal Labyrinth, which will be the hardest combat encounter that you've, uh, that you've completed on your goal to, uh, to getting 12 challenges done. Uh, and then once you've done that, your character will get a considerable power boost. You'll get two more ascension points, uh, which will really help a lot of builds come together and be a lot stronger than they otherwise are. Anyways, uh, that is not just 12 challenges, but that's a discussion of what I feel are the easiest 18. Uh, obviously, you only need to do 12 of these if your, goal, uh, if your goal is 12 or 40. But if you decide to go for 24, this is a strong foundation for getting there. Next video in the series will cover the challenges that I would add to go for 24 and then the last video rounding out the trilogy will be discussing the challenges uh, the challenges that are left uh, the ones that are either designed for people that are going for 36 or the ones that you probably only do if you're going for 40. If you've got comments or questions definitely fire away below uh, if you're interested in downloading this spreadsheet uh, I will post it on uh, my blog www.sergog.com uh, so just head there if you're keen to download that uh, it's just an ordinary spreadsheet otherwise i'm gonna leave it there i hope you have a good one